Hello. All right. Hello, everyone. Time for the podcast. Podcast. Number podcast 76. Time. 76. Mm-hmm. Yes, we're going to be talking about some Kill a Kill. That's right. The, In case you the couldn't sh- tell. The show that I would say shook, our hearts. shook me to my core. Yeah. My very life fiber. My my nexus life fiber was mm. was was. Torn I was waiting that. for that yeah. one. Yeah. For real. Yeah, this show, it really does hold a very special place in my Kokoro because, yeah. like, uh, I can't remember the last time I had so much fun with a show. Mm-hmm. Like, the the closest thing that I could think of would be, like, the Haruhi franchise because I loved that, absolutely loved that. But even then, that was something where I watched that early on in my anime career, whereas this, it's like, I've seen tons of stuff before, but Kill a Kill... I don't think I've ever watched something as fun. Yeah, I think I think as far as the the overall hype and excitement, oh, yeah. uh, just oh, yeah. hyper dose that the show carries within mm-hmm. not only its story but each individual character, it's almost yes. something that approaches uh, a level of meme like JoJo's. But it's something that goes beyond that because it tries to have all this symbolism and extra. Well, like and it multi-dimensional does. meaning. No, like, no, no. I, I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm uh-huh, saying that yeah, yeah. It, it does have all this, mm-hmm. uh, all this, all this extra meaning and stuff in it. So I, I seem to recall at one point I compared it to Shakespeare because it has, and you were like, "Wait, what?" Mm-hmm. Um, because it has all of that extra symbolism and stuff. But the thing is, you don't have to be looking at that. You could just right. go to it just for the 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 laughs and the action and the fun. Yeah. And that would be totally fine, right? You would still be getting a full experience, a full meal deal. But there's so much more to there so that you can, you know, if you want to, you can look deeper. Yes, and specifically <clears throat> with Kill a Kill, it's a show that if you want just some ridiculous action hype, etchy, you know, well, yes, that too. high That's quality, true. crazy Plot. quality animation yeah. and mm-hmm all that jazz then it's it's right there for you yeah and and if you want to go in and write essays on the uh the complexity of the the relationship dynamics and the coming of age sure. story that's going yep. on i you would say that. right there in front of you but also like why behind the scenes mm-hmm. uh it, it's pretty it's pretty impressive yeah. uh, i would say specifically what also makes it so impressive is just the tightness of it and we're going to be yeah. going into a lot of these things. <laughs> the tightness, wow, well, and the yeah. and the fact that your 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 voice got the frog in your throat. <coughs> that specific word. But before yeah. that, but before that, we VIP have to do a VIP shout, shout out. out. Yes, Jipen Boy. Yes, uh, Jipen Boy or or Jipen Boy. Uh, thank thank you so much for your support. Uh, yes, appreciate it thank a you lot. So much. Uh, it's glad to have you on Patreon and yes. uh, on Discord as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of people who are on Patreon, but uh, I don't know about the Discord and how yeah. awesome it can be. So thank you so much for being there, supporting us. We love you so much. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this podcast. Podcast. So y'all who are here, we finished uh, it. Kill we a finished kill a kill. Yeah. Like. <sighs> yeah. I feel like I feel like I've moved somewhere far away from an old friend. Mm-hmm. And and now it, that can only be sated by rewatching it again and again and again. Yeah. <sighs> One of the things that's unfortunate about Kill a Kill though is in the same way that we were a bit predisposed to not liking the idea of watching Kill a Kill because of oh, just yeah. looking at it from the outside, mm. it looks like a etchy fueled fan service just romp without actually yep. any no substance, substance to it. Yeah. And what we watched, you know, I would say for what we were kind of looking for in the beginning was, at least for me, uh, something that would have a lot of hype and something that would have a lot of energy to it and give a Gurren Lagan type experience. Because sure. I, at the very least, I, I kind of was expecting there to be some similarities there. Mm -hmm. And the first episode gives you basically the, hey, if you like this, stick around, because it gets better. Because if you don't like the first episode, man, you probably won't like Kill a Kill. And if you don't like episode three, then... Yeah. 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 This... Who are you even? Like, what... Who hurt you? Like, yeah, this this anime within three episodes basically tells oh. you everything it's going to be and more. And I think also what's what's kind of special is that it, it promised so much in just the first three episodes that I mm-hmm. kind of want to go and rewatch those actually 
over and over and over again before I go to the rest of the show. Oh, yeah. Because I remember going back through uh, notes and stuff and looking at um, a couple specific scenes in episode three. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we were talking about episode three, our discussion spiked. It went into some, like, crazy deep areas. And we started talking about how this show was going to be so much more than what we initially thought. And uh, there's a period after that where the discussion kind of died back down a little bit as the show basically started to ramp things back up again right. from a ground floor level. Because, like, episode three, even though, like, okay, when you think about it, episode three doesn't actually touch on that much as far as the main plot goes, mm-hmm. but everything was moving so quickly, and they got to that point of having what would essentially be a final showdown that seemed right. like a finale on the third episode. Yep. Um, we're just thinking, okay, they've kind of promised to do the impossible here yeah. which is i mean hey gurren lagan um <laughs> yeah exactly and then and then but the but the thing is is that even when they throttled it back on like the the speed of the plot mm-hmm. everything felt everything had the same like manic frenzied feel to it even though we weren't actually getting like big plot details but because they weren't super specific on what the final plot was going to be we just knew that there was something about ryuko's dad right and that was pretty much it. We didn't know whether they were stalling or whether this was what the show was supposed to be or whatever. No, see, this is this is this is the thing that I, I, I think was was genius about the first three episodes was when Jacob and I encountered the like he's talking about the the slowness of I would say uh, the like episodes. episode four really yeah primarily episode four and a little bit into the other ones but what they did in the first three episodes promised us something that we knew we were going to get. Like you were right. saying, we didn't know about plot things and stuff. I, I think you're, I think you're like, retroactively well, applying that. Go back and watch we, some of the discussions and stuff. Cause we were so on point with guessing really? some of the actual thematic things about where the show was going. Well, and that's another thing that it does knock out of the park because like, cause, cause the thing is like, we didn't like, okay, we were, we were calling a bunch of the things like, like Satsuki and Ryuko teaming up at some point. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, like we were, we were on point with that. But the thing is, we still didn't have anything that they would team up against necessarily. Yeah, but that doesn't that like, doesn't mean anything because I th- I'd say I would say in the in the grand scheme of things, what we saw was the symbolism of the story already being told at a very strong present way yes, early on. Absolutely. Despite all the all the the plot manicness, what mm-hmm. what I think that if you if you haven't seen Kill a Kill, and you're in this podcast right now we are going to be talking about a little bit of spoilers yeah. here uh, so so fix S- this travesty and watch kill and start kill. watching kill a kill it's yeah. okay we if 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 people have to leave that's that's totally fine mm-hmm. this is more for the people we'll pause are... things for you hallelujah yeah okay. yeah seriously <clears throat> um but i think this is where the show um gets maybe misinterpreted by people that see only the the shallow aspect of it is they looked at the plot and not the themes and this is something that yes you can make tons of jokes about but the themes were quite present from the beginning and in fact i think they were blaring them at us like with like a loudspeaker horn you know from the beginning yeah 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 yeah. satsuki was a was a fantastic character to kick things off from the antagonist side of things yeah you know if we go as far as plot goes but I remember within like an episode or two breaking down the things that seem to be the the symbols and then trying to find threads, haha, if you will, right. to connect them all together. Uh-huh. Yep, yep. And it brought me to family. This whole story was about family. Like the, the whole thing. Even though, even though we had no idea that they were actually sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that was that was yes yes that was your first big spoiler y'all so so oh right yeah yeah, yeah exactly so oh, we didn't actually say who we were talking about that, yeah. that is true uh-huh. so <laughs> so uh specifically with the the story being set up we had our expectations start at a very small place we had everything coming at this this uh small angle right. from where ryuko as a character yes. was entering into the scene then we simple had, you know yeah. Someone killed my father. Yes. Prepare to die. Yes. And then we have Satsuki. Mm-hmm. Satsuki gets brought onto the scene and absolutely stole the show for us. I would like, say she stole the spotlight, but she was the spotlight. Yes, exactly. Like, <laughs> she literally 
And and by the way, we we're gonna talk a lot about this, but I gotta start it out really early. Kill a kill the music. The Kill a Kill's presentation in music and animation and in all the things that it did was so self-aware, but also so grandiose yes. when it needed to be. Yep. Mm-hmm. That I think if if high energy is something that just kind of drains you, Kill a Kill is not the show for you. Because everything is high energy. <laughs> everything is high energy. And yes. I know that in some in some cases a lot of people like to see the the delta essentially they like to see the change from going from the low energy to the and kill build. A kill definitely does that and kill a kill does that but, but i would say that it does uh suffer a little bit from the thing of it's high energy is so high all the time that the delta isn't that constant or or, or at consistent least, or at least you wouldn't think to but this is a rather incomprehensible show and mm. And like the whole idea of having a show that's hype all the time, right? right? Like I, like the the whole idea of hype actually for shows, I felt like a lot of the time that is was something that was used to basically uh, take your audience that had drank the Kool Aid, right? right, and get them to overlook the flaws. Oh yeah. But the thing is, Kill a Kill is so like just just out there with its flaws right it doesn't try and hide them when it does the 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 animation like budget cuts you know of just sliding rows of characters that are all identical onto the screen they do it you know what even down to the having like mako when she spins around go two-dimensional oh yeah you know all that stuff absolutely wonderful right but the thing is is that because it does that I don't feel like it's trying to cover up for its flaws because right. just like with the characters, they're bearing everything. <laughs> like get naked, get naked. Yep. So, so earlier on in the show, uh, uh, I think they were telling us right from the beginning that this was a family based uh, story. This was a story that centered around family. Mm-hmm. The conflict that was entered into family. the story was family oriented. Yep. And therefore, you know, I think we could have extrapolated if we like if we did and I and, and I'm mistaking it, I don't remember, I'm sorry, I don't remember all our discussions perfectly. But I remember that at the very least it was present in my mind that the idea of Ryuko's journey being a personal one put me on to the importance of the dad's role, not in the plot of the story, but in the themes oh, of the story. Right. Uh-huh. So yeah. There's other stories, other stories that do stuff like this with family mattering. Basically, family being the primary uh, modus operandi for the plot, conflict, and themes. Right. A show like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, I think, is a uh, prime yes, example, a example. Yeah. of family matters being basically the entire story. Right. Mom dies. Dad wasn't there. Exactly. Little brother's trying to bring mom back. Yeah. Then, summon you know right and then and know. then the whole story is family matters right we care about each other you know mm-hmm. and and it's fantastic and uh, so okay yeah that is an excellent example a lot of the times the family matters thing is also used very badly because mm-hmm. it's yes. you know let's hear about the drama with the fill in the blank family whatever the main character family is or mm-hmm. antagonist family or whatever um and kill a kill does not do that like even though there are a lot of fam- familial relations they do not do that because that's it's what it's all about, right? Mm-hmm. It's not something that's just tacked on. It's one to one of the core, you know, nexus fibers of the entire show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have these characters that are brought in uh, rather rapidly in the beginning because we suddenly get the Devas, we suddenly get Satsuki, mm-hmm. we suddenly get oh, yeah. Mako. We yeah. get like the way in which they're thrust into the story is so rapid. Yes, yes, I'm going to use lots of little metaphors. Again like and again. Yeah. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. And a- as they're brought into the story in, in this successively quick way, one of the things that they do, uh, really, I would say, really in a kind of a, a wonderful way, is blend them and their introductions into the ridiculous pacing of the plot. Right, because, like, if... Because, okay. <clears throat> it... One could say, they would be wrong, but one could say that Kill a Kill's themes are really just more extrapolation by the audience mm-hmm. rather than something that was deliberately put into the show by the creators. But and they I would mean, be wrong. That's... <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I mean, hey, that's our opinions and stuff. Yeah. Who knows how much the, the creators and writers actually meant to put in there? But the thing is, especially the whole thing with the fact that it's so based on threads, if you think about threads... Um, 
you don't see the threads when you look at a piece of clothing, yep. right? You have to get real close to see the threads. And usually, yeah. like, uh, one, uh, random example, but in Lord of the Rings, the movies, right? Saruman's robes, they look plain white robes. Mm -hmm. In the behind the scenes stuff, they actually show the robes up close, and there's intricate, like, patterns all over it. But you don't see that from far away, right? On camera, right. because you just see plain white robes. But That's you've great. got this unbelievably amazing stuff in there if you look closely, right? Yeah. That that you you just don't see that you can, but you get the effect of it, right? If they were to just have plain white robes, <laughs> it would look pretty lame, right? Right. Um, and that's I feel like what Kill a Kill is with a lot of its themes. It has them there, right? And and the fact the level to which they are put into the story is not something that could happen by accident. Mm -hmm. Like this is almost like scientific. As much as, yes, they have the whoosh in every transformation oh, yes. sequence and all of that. Because this right? show wants to have its cake and eat it. And I exactly. think that it, I think that it, it did it successfully. So when the story goes into these manic uh, moments where the plot is just rapidly accelerating and then other parts where they actually kind slow of it slow down it lot. down, yeah. they take things back to the characters. Yep. And, and I wouldn't point at this show and say, well... You know, uh, this episode or this thing here was kind of a you know a mistake or some something else specifically like that. You can look at specific parts, and I would say they're they're less enjoyable than others, absolutely, mm -hmm. because Kill a Kill is some of the highest highs I've right, seen in exactly. anime. So of course there will be things that don't quite measure up to it, you know, across the course of the whole story. Right, but but one of the things that's crazy is that. The show is 25 episodes long, or 24 plus the OVA, if you count that, which, by mm -hmm. the way, we did watch, and that's the next thing coming out for mm -hmm. public YouTube access. Yeah. But um, if, you, if you look at these episodes as being the journey of a typical kind of uh, young protagonist coming-of-age story, mm -hmm. we went through all the tropes that would get us to, basically, I would say, the end point of a series by about episode 13, 14, 15 or so. Yeah, it's like Kill a Kill is it's condensed. Like it's very condensed. And and yeah. and it's almost feels kind of weird saying that because you have episodes like episode 4 that are mm -hmm. like the definition of filler, right? Yeah. Episode 4 does not need to be there, right? right. Like I so I could go back and rewatch it and maybe there's maybe there's like an occasional like reference to you know something like uh you know i don't know something something mm -hmm. other that relates to the overall plot right um but that episode was one of the most hilarious fun episodes of the show right like just just the antics of like all the old grandmas and stuff like pulling out the machine guns and everything the and just, bazookas yeah yeah and the bazookas and everything and just shooting down the bus as they're trying to get to school right right and and the thing is is that at this point like in hindsight it might seem a lot more pointless mm -hmm. but like at this point in the series what we've seen is the the making fun of the tropes of the of the rescued damsel in distress that is Mako yep um rivalry between uh, Ryuko and Satsuki, mm -hmm. um, a mystery surrounding her father's death, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's and and that Satsuki does isn't just a villain, right? She, oh yeah, like she, that, she, there's depth there. Yeah, they don't they don't but, basically do a great divide and basically have you know the the episode be right. missing essentially its reason within the overall plot conflict. Yeah, it's still we have but, things that go on with Ryuko's characterization and yeah. the whole past stuff that it's, went on with the dad. Right, it still pertains and and it also still pertains to the whole like school chaos adventure stuff mm -hmm. even though like when you think about it the plot and the rules and stuff of Kill a Kill are kind of like, you know, mm, Sure, whatever, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and 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 also we're going to bring up the whole animation thing in a, in, a, in a little bit, but mm -hmm. it used in a lot of ways its goofy bad animation mm -hmm. to great success in the comedy aspect of the yep. show. And then it's just for the hype. Right. And and we had just they had just blown their load essentially on the episode 3 like yeah. high quality uh -huh. stuff. So naturally, it had to be a little right. bit of a, a downer after that for episode four. I feel like with episode three, they were like, okay, episode three, that's awesome. That buys us like a solid four episodes. What do we do to keep them roped in after that? Okay, got it. JoJo's references. Mako, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Yes. And they're like, yes, <laughs> give that man a raise. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> and, and we'll bring that up now, actually. I think that this show was extremely self-aware. 
this stro this show knew mm-hmm. exactly what it wanted to oh, be. Oh, yeah. And this is something that uh, I don't think is easy for. Uh, I I would say if you're going to do this kind of like Gynax kind of mm-hmm. like. I don't know if it's now even Gynax, but like a Studio Trigger kind of ending, you know, uh-huh. where basically you have everything go crazy. You yeah. know, you Gurren Lagann it and things go into space and everything yep. gets, you know, a mm-hmm. mythic and level of super pro- mech things and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. All, all that jazz is happening. But you also have these ridiculous fan servicey comedy moments and fan servicey, and not just in the nudity aspect, but oh, also yeah. like in the anime references, like the yes, ridiculous absolutely. amount of references. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them I had to be retroactively told about after watching the episode because I sure. didn't even catch that it was an anime reference. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that cultured. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not in this guy's level yet. So like, and even I, I still have a level. Like I, go. I noticed the JoJo's references mm-hmm. or the like the Akira references or sure. you know just stuff like that. But that's mm-hmm. like that's like basic tier. You know, that's right. like everyone knows that. And that's the thing about Kill a Kill. There's like uh, people say that Kill a Kill doesn't have depth, but no, 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 no. It has so much depth, and it has something in every single layer. Right. Like just like you know, say with clothing you wouldn't have just one level of threads mm-hmm. right you do one and then another and then another and then another and they'd all be interconnected right right so one leads to the next yeah and that's what it does yeah like in the most amazingly wonderful way possible like i can't even begin to imagine what kind of mad genius went into the making of this show like this was definitely a passion project for sure for, from a lot for of sure. awesome people yeah and and uh, yeah but Lightning you know where, bottle. but like, you know where the best self awareness of the whole show comes into play is the characters, and specific well, yeah. and specifically, I would say, in a lot of ways, in kind of the villains, in a lot of ways, I would say, particularly not the villains, but the villains of the earlier part of the show, right. uh-huh. the Devas yep. and Satsuki. Yep. Well, and I mean Mako of obviously, yeah, like, but we're gonna have like, a whole section the, well, dedicated well, to Mako. And the thing is, is that like when, once you were talking about that, I'm like, I hope he doesn't say Mako because it's like, come on, that's so obvious. So like, obvious. <laughs> <laughs> the sky is blue. You know. Yeah. The yes. sun is on fire. So with every villain that they brought up in the early moment there we have everything tying directly back into Satsuki. And Satsuki Mm -hmm. set the stage for what these antagonists would be. She stands proud. She <laughs> she, she heel clicks and she heel sword clicks taps and, bro- and, and and shines <laughs> brightly from on above. Yeah, and broadcasts her you know hardcore beliefs from the top from, of a citadel from with the which, power of her eyebrows. Yes, which the power of physics do not hold hold sway over her, nope, or nope. you know diminishing mm-hmm. returns for sound waves. And, or, oh, I mean physics. Physics were like cast aside long ago, oh, long like ago Gamaguri yeah. era, like. Well, yeah. Gamaguri era was introduced in the very beginning, yes, yep. but we mm-hmm. didn't know his connection to Satsuki. No, we did not. In not, the beginning. Not at the very beginning, but like, just, I, okay. But I, I mean, they, they gave us backstories on every yep. deva. They did. They and gave us backstories for Satsuki. Yep. They yep. gave us mm-hmm. basically the question of, <laughs> yeah. ah, do you want us to defeat these antagonists? And uh, we went, oh yeah, yep. they seem so high and mighty. <laughs> and then we're like, ah, but first we're going to make you fall in love with them. We're like, Yes, that is that is Wait, good. We really? we appreciate that. Yes, it's like, like uh, sure, many but it's have like, tried, you know. But. but it's like no, we're going to make you root for them, maybe even more than the protagonist. Uh-huh. And we're like. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. Like, are these actually villains? Are these yeah, bad guys? Like, I don't and, think they and are. And here's the thing. The biggest example of a story that I can think of mm-hmm. that did that to the level that Kill a Kill did right. is Avatar The Last Airbender with Zuko. So let's let's just check off the list here. We compare Kill a Kill to Avatar The Last Airbender, and this is with all seriousness, like mm-hmm. which just goes to show how amazing this show is. Avatar The Last Airbender, Lord of the Rings, and Shakespeare. Oh, and Gurren Lagann, obviously. And, well, yeah, and Gurren Lagann, but that's, yeah. you know, that's obvious. But, like, <sighs> yeah, I, I feel like maybe maybe that would be a way to get people that haven't seen Kill a Kill and aren't predisposed to enjoy Kill a Kill to watch it, although it might overhype them a little bit, is to say, like, hey, if you like Lord of the Rings, Shakespeare, and Avatar The Last Airbender... No, no. Because, see, the thing is, Jacob, is that you don't go into a story primarily right. for analysis, that's true. That's, that's, that's one true. of the things that yeah. that's one of the things that most people don't go into a story for. But I think that you could sell Kill a Kill entirely on the virtue of the characters. Yep, you entirely. Could. You really, could. and not even the full cast. You just need maybe the three main girls. 
Yeah, that's yep. it. Mako, Ryoko, and Satsuki. Satsuki. Or yep. wait, wait, or. But okay, what are the three main girls though, Caleb? We have to figure this Mako, out. Mako, Ryoko, and Satsuki. Or is it Mako, Ryoko, and Gamagori? No, 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 no. <laughs> We're gonna add the fourth best girl into the mix. But like, then we can add Gamagori era. Guys, and then after that, in chat is Gamagori era number three best girl or number, or number four. four best girl? Uh, number four best girl. I don't know. No, I'm I'm sorry. I don't know. Ryuko's character development. Ryuko's, Ryuko's character characterization is absolutely amazing. I I gotta admit, I gotta admit, it was it was very uh it was very tough, um, watching uh, Satsuki and Mako kind of duking it out at the yeah. top for me, mm-hmm. because I'm like, wow, our protagonist just is getting like just. Just right, just like, destroyed by these two wonderful characters. Yeah, <laughs> number one. <laughs> Gamagori's number four best girl, but number one best maiden. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that's right, that's right. Yes, in, Fine. In, Wait, in, who would be number four then? No, no, probably. Oh, sure. I just nice hope it's new. Unless they put it new. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you could Ryuko's put you could put Ragio. He earns the best, the title for best boy, indisputably. That ah! he does. That he does. Ah, uh, I don't know. Name competition. I, I not get... even name someone that would beat him. Just name competition. Just, just like um, someone that comes close. The the homeroom teacher, obviously. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, he no. is. He is a no. good. No, he's he's, a... he's good, but best boy. Well, the thing is, if we're giving Gamaguri huh. both best boy and best girl in the competition, he's there, big enough for both. I guess he is. I guess he is. Okay, fine. He wins. He wins. Yeah, I had to think about it for a second there. But yeah, I oh Senketsu, is Senketsu. Okay, yeah, Senketsu is a good Senketsu, boy. Senketsu, Senketsu, Senketsu beats... is a good boy. No, 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 but he doesn't beat Gamaguri. Yeah, he beats Gamaguri. <laughs> he does Ira. not beat. All right, Gamaguri. press one in chat if Gamaguri era is best boy. Press two in chat if Senketsu is best boy. <laughs> DTR is best boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, DTR. <laughs> but hey, that's true. Who's to say that Senketsu is male? Uh, like he is a dude's voice, but I mean, come on. One, uh, one, one, one. No, no, no two, see, there's, two. There's okay, a bunch one. of twos. Zero. Coming. I think they're just saying neither. Basically. <laughs> Uh, See, but, we just give everyone individual titles, easy game. Basically, yeah. like Kill a Kill did, it had names right. for everything. Like, you know? and and that's okay. And and uh, names, by the way, every time they would do like a school pun name, call it the the the, the like the latent dad in me. But I loved it. I loved oh, yeah. it so much. The puns were just they were beautiful. Great. They were the wonderful. natural's election. Yes, please and thank you. Yes. Like, oh man. Yeah, there's a there was a simplistic, just unashamed uh overtness with every little bit of the humor that came in, in Kill a Kill. And a lot of it I, I would say was while it was overt, a lot of it it was something where I'm like, okay, that's that's really funny. And that is definitely mm-hmm. something that's just a wonderful piece of humor and stuff. But people would tell me afterwards, it's like, well, it's more than just that. It's this plus all this extra meeting because you don't know Japanese. Da, 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 da. I'll oh, be right, like, yeah. what? And then there would be the whole thing where they would name things and then they would have the actual words for the names still be in, like, casting shadows in the show and, like, sure. having, like, Mako lean against one of them or something like that. Like, oh. So I think we only got, I think it was four to four. It's tied. So, yeah. Cuts deep. Hey, Senketsu and Gamaguri Yura can both be at the top for yeah. best boy. There you go. Besides Till My Body Is Dry, what is the best song from the OST? Can uh, anyone truly say? Blumenkrantz? But probably Blumenkrantz. Oh, but it's like, obviously but, but Blumenkrantz. But the thing is, well, no, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Blumenkrantz is absolutely amazing. But I feel like I would say that just because that's the only other one I know the name of. But, like, what's the... there? There's that other track that is, like always in there and it's amazing and well there's a lot of them the, but we just don't know the names right right like like well straight up like just the da 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 yeah like ugh Blumenkrantz of course yeah yeah I mean it probably is Blumenkrantz yeah yeah even though even though it's for freaking Ragio yeah yeah Psychronius. How do Sanagiyama, Gamaguri, and Mikisugi uh, rank between each other in terms of being phallic metaphors? <laughs> well, okay. 
Mikisugi is not a phallic metaphor. He is just a bright, <laughs> shining light um, that illuminates all. Oh, yeah. yes. He spreads oh, yes. over everything. Um, but uh, Nono's God marching Lord. band theme is pretty godlike. Oh, that that is it true. is. That's it true. definitely yes. is. Yeah. Yeah. So we're mm-hmm. going to be talking a lot about kind of the the, the, the style of Kill a Kill. And I think this is something where actually if people are a little bit more honest, this is where people I think both like, like love, love, love the show and probably have the most issues with the show, but then call it the plot or the, sure. the all the other things. Yeah, I stuff. feel like most of the time when people have problems with stories, like they won't really know why. Yeah. It'll just be something and, and they'll... It just, just rubs them the wrong way. Right, it... Yeah, um, or it didn't quite rub them the right way. Uh, mm. <laughs> they weren't properly serviced. <laughs> exactly. Um, and usually that's because they, they come into it with not the best expectations. And that and that doesn't mean that they are thinking low of the show, but it is basically just that they, they maybe think it, it's going to be way more than it is and they're not accepting for what it is at the beginning or they have certain like you know stigmas towards certain things so that they can't fully enjoy it. Like, episode three, like, how horrible would that be if we had watched Kill a Kill back when we were a bit more, like, like uh, about fan service, mm-hmm. and we hadn't been able to, uh, like, enjoy the amazing hype that was there because mm-hmm. we were like, ah, uh, these these costumes are a bit much, you know. Yeah. Like, that would have been horrible. And, and here's something that's kind of interesting. Is there a specific thing in stories that ruins your opportunity to really... Uh, I would say get the full value of a story. And I would say that there are a lot of them for me. Yeah. There are a lot of them. And and yet I think that Kill a Kill, when you look at how brash it is with all the things in its style that would rub like certain people the wrong way, uh-huh. like a like a specific group of people would be like, uh, eh, you know, no, that's not that's not for me. Um, because it's not trying to bait you in with it, it's not trying to be i would say a kind of a bait and switch kind of thing where yeah, it very much is what it is it wears its heart on its sleeve and yep. yeah uh-huh like yep. within i i would say an episode or three of, mm-hmm. of the beginning you know very much that this is a very fan service heavy show it has a lot yes. of specific things mm-hmm. in it that it's going to use over and over and over again it yep. does escalate i would say uh quite a bit yeah i mean i if, my personal favorite would be the uh the flying uh, air shockwave <laughs> boob flap that with the camera like right there and it's constantly like staying right there and just <laughs> just looping that for like 20 seconds it's gonna get clipped so hard oh man <laughs> oh, okay uh yes yes so the themes the style and i would say all of that in kill a kill is something that jacob brilliantly pointed out uh, to me earlier there's something that supersedes the logic of the narrative mm-hmm. it's something that is you know basically a point where they realized okay when it comes to uh logic into presentation we are going to throw it out the window throw that out the window yep. and have theme and style rule the decision making process yep. and, and i think that is a brilliant decision yep i think that if you can have your story which is the primarily the interaction and conflict between characters have right. logical sense to it. Yep. But the means by which we present exactly. the interactions yep. and conflict between the characters not have the logic, but have all the themes and the styles very much ingrained within it, you mm-hmm. can have a very enjoyable story. Yes. It might not actually engage the interest of the Shakespearean types, Jacob. Like, it might be something well, where they no, are like, no. where is the dialogue? No, no, where no, 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 the... no, that's the thing. That That's what, like, Shakespeare is basically all dialogue, and Kill a Kill, I would say, is, for the most part, in a lot of ways, dialogue. Uh, yeah, I would say the dialogue is not where you're getting the uh, the depth I would say primarily in Kill a Maybe, Kill. Maybe, I mean, they do a lot of, of it with the visual storytelling and stuff too. Right, but... I, I would say primarily it's where you get more of the humor and the uh, the jokes and I would say a lot of the characterization, but you don't get actually that much of the, well, uh, okay. the presentation okay. stuff there. That's more of a visual Well, thing, here's something I might opinion. say actually about Shakespeare is that Shakespeare doesn't write great dialogue, he writes great lines. And, and I mean, he writes great dialogue too, but when you think about it, it's the one person saying something and it's absolutely gorgeous and amazing. And then another person will say something, but it's not as much like back and forth. 
And when I think about Kill a Kill with that, I think of like the what the sparrow doesn't tell the eagle how to soar or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, yes, please and thank you. Like put that on my tombstone. Um, yes, yes, that's that's not. That's not dialogue. That's a monologue, right? And I would say that in the in the writing aspect of it, in the in the interactions between the characters, that's where I would say a lot of the over the top, nonsensical, ridiculous, incomprehensible, mm-hmm. good stuff comes from. But it's not in the logic narrative side of things. It's not oh yeah, the, yeah, absolutely. Because the because the thing, <laughs> yeah, it's not in the logic. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. That that's just something that basically. Because like in a lot of stories, one of the one of the toughest things with stories is having it all make sense, having it all be cohesive, right? And that's yeah. that's why like if you've ever tried to write a story, and especially if you've ever gotten through like the first draft, yeah. I know for me, once I did that, I had this newfound respect for all the books out there and all the stories out there that even though I didn't like them as stories, I was like, holy yes. crap, just the fact that they were able to put that together and make it work right. is impressive. Even though even if it wasn't very like, you know, groundbreaking or something i would write home about um mm-hmm. and kill a kill is basically like what if we just you know didn't have to worry about that right what if we just didn't and and we'll make it very clear at the very beginning with gamagori's whole entrance of size shifting you know to make it be like yeah 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 logic has no place here go yep. take that somewhere else mm-hmm. we're having fun yep yep i think that's that's something that the story really carries in all aspects of its presentation it, it definitely chooses that over the large majority of the time. And it, it's something that I think wins out. Whereas in some other shows, they'll try to blend the two and it ends up looking like oh, they really sure. don't know what they want to be. Right. Um, I would say specific shows that come very close to being nigh perfect at this at like very specific parts is uh, Jojo's. I would yes. say Jojo's is one mm-hmm. of the best examples of where theme and style, uh, absolutely supersede right. logic and in a way that works towards the stories and then when they have their logic in there for the most part it works very well and it's you know it's ingrained right. into the story and, and i would say with jojo's one of the things that it does because like with jojo's the the logic part is kind of like a blessing and a curse in my mind yeah. because because the stands are unbelievably creative right so you can have awesome conflicts that happen there right yeah and you don't have to worry about a lot of the issues that you would normally have if you just had some ambiguous power system where it's let's power up and develop some you know convenient power at the final battle or whatever right right but because of that they'll have battles that are based kind of sort of in logic which can clash with the style right sometimes um and i feel like kill a kill is some is just that show where they were like let's absolutely stick to our guns do the one thing you know or, or the two things you know right but but not let it get clouded with other stuff and yeah. if we could get another story like that at some point in the next 10 20 years that would be wonderful that would be wonderful i i think that you can look towards everything in the visual storytelling the ost uh, the the times where they synchronized the songs with the transformation sequences to give us these huge mm-hmm. like just cathartic experiences yep. Yep. where we were practically like just you know Craig Gasming basically with just joy for this just wonderful like just build up moment to, to happen I, I i can't really describe it without going into <laughs> too lewd territories but right like... but well but yeah the idea that like okay because because when we first saw the full transformations we were just like okay wow like wow all right all right okay yeah <laughs> this is that kind of show yeah, oh, yeah it is that kind of show you know um but i think you were the one who said it or where you were like, at some point, we are probably going to be so unbelievably psyched yep. for that transformation scene. Yep. And well, it's the same logic you'd use for a mecha transformation. You right. Know, yeah. Yeah. Like but the, mecha right. Exactly. But the fact yeah. that there's like, well, and and that's one of the other things. Like, I generally don't like mecha that much. Mm-hmm. I prefer it when, like, for instance, mechs versus armor. I will take armor every day of the week and twice on sundays and we've had that and, argument about whether or not uh you know gundams are exactly you know, and are, kill a kill armor kill a kill basically is like yeah let's do armor but still have all like the mech you know references and connotations oh, in yeah. there too oh yeah because they call it clothing but like i mean the clothing it's armor it's armor yeah 
Yeah. I mean, armor is just a type of clothing, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's that's what it truly needs to be. Right. Yeah. And I'm the kind of person who'd just rather join Nudist Beach and just be like, you know, clothing <laughs> clothing is such a waste of a waste I'd, of time. I'd, I'd gamaguri era it up and just <laughs> <laughs> I would be the homeroom teacher, just a permanent magenta light where it needs yeah. to be. Or multiple, it <laughs> depends, you know. The soundtrack is where Kill a Kill gets to be straight up born as opposed to implicative. Now, the question <gasps> is, are you talking about literally or that it's music porn? Because <laughs> like, both could be true. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so do you have all these characters, right, in Kill a Kill? And they're wonderful. Yes, they're so they enjoyable. Are, they're, they're ridiculous. They're over the top. But I think that we talked about this a little bit in some of the last discussions for the show. And we talked about why we think, in a lot of ways, Kill a Kill edges out Gurren Lagann. And uh. now, after kind of thinking about it for a little bit yep. of time and having a little bit of a kind of a bit of a respite to realize and, and rewatch some of the episodes of Kill a Kill, I'm going to rewatch Gurren Lagann pretty soon, probably in the next month or so. I think that Kill a Kill has a better overall story experience than Gurren Lagann. The thing is that's that's really tough to it's say. So wrong to it's, say. No, but... the thing is that's tough to say is that Gurren Lagann spoke to me about two things that Kill a Kill did not. And this is nothing I would say is a weakness on Kill a Kill's part. It's just showing Gurren Lagann's strength. Is that mm. the themes of Gurren Lagann and Kill a Kills are actually different. Yes, very and different. this is something that blows my mind mm -hmm. consistently. I, I absolutely rate Gil, uh, Gurren Lagann as one of the one of the best anime of mm -hmm. all time. And this, I also would Kill a Kill. I do like Kill a Kill overall more than Gurren Lagann. It's, it's something that I, I think I was kind of willing to, to I would say, kind of tease y'all with by saying, but... Now I'm now I'm certain. Yeah. Now I'm certain. It, it edges it out in a couple areas, and one of the main ones are, I would say, the entire cast of characters. Yeah. And the music. Let's well, be real. Well, the, the music the music is absolutely wonderful. I would say also the OST of Gurren Lagann is is pretty freaking fantastic. Oh yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So with these characters, right? Mm -hmm. This is basically where I would say that Gurren Lagann just. It basically loses to uh, kill a kill though is there are a, a, a an enormity like a, a, a large cast of characters like mm -hmm. in Gurren Lagann yeah but the characters in Gurren Lagann in some ways try to be more realistic than I was really hoping for oh. in a lot of ways in sure. a lot of ways the themes in Gurren Lagann are more I would say not realistic but they're something that ties back into the characters that are meant to be a little bit more realistic in certain ways right well and and uh, i feel like yeah because on the realism thing it's that while the while the characters had their shticks it was very much a character that had a shtick whereas with kill a kill i feel like the character was their shtick and they exactly. would hold it in a very specific place and then beat you to death with it yes um, and and that was good i would say for, yeah. for the majority of the characters that was really good because when they were their shtick and they owned it you realize oh the characterization is encapsulated in this shtick here but every time they'd introduce a character within like an episode or two they promised development and they actually developed they actually developed mm -hmm. those characters. Oh. Like, that's something that just blows my mind. What? Psychronia, that is a great point. What? I would watch Kill a Kill as a rom-com slice of life, not so much for Gurren Lagann. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. like because Gurren Lagann, the characters are great, but it's more of, like, the the characters that are great are awesome, right? Yes, but then there's there are... a bunch of characters that I just forget about. I don't know the names of and all that right. stuff. Right, there are great characters in Gurren Lagann, and you can list them all on your one hand. Right. And Whereas on Kill a Kill, Kill, a Kill. you'd be questioning, like, wait, is it two hands or three hands? Right. Like, well, like okay, let's let's do that. So, so, so we have the main three. The main three. We have Gamagori well, Ira. Yeah, Gamagori Ira, Non Non, Sanagayama. I don't know about the. Ch -ch -ch -guy. Yeah, not, not, not necessarily not as much. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, Ikuro. Oh, Ragyo. Ikuro. Um, Ikuro. Um, um, the family, uh, Mako's family, specifically, I would say the mom. Uh yes, Mako's the mom, mom, the mom for sure. Yeah, I would um, say also um, 
uh, the the butler, Satsuki's yes, butler. Yes, the butler. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I forget his name. Oh, Help man. me out, chat. I, I can't yeah. remember his name, but yeah, he was he was absolutely awesome. And, and and I think it's kind of like one of those things of it's just proximity to Satsuki and how Satsuki treats him. Mm -hmm. And because Satsuki's so amazing, it's just yeah. like, well, this guy's fantastic. And even though I hated and, Nui, Nui, but yeah, even though Nui, I hated Nui, I love to it, hate Nui. It takes something special to hate someone that much. What, what was like, the guy, what was the guy that made the 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 contra was it Roscoe the controversial decision the one who became the council member and oh Lagan. Rossiu 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 yeah. Rossiu had a realistic moment where the show made us want to dislike him but I think that was that right. was that was a that was a moment where his character it made sense that he went down that path there right. Nui was the most incomprehensible uh -huh. yeah. nonsensical character of them all and, like right. even more than Mako in a lot of oh, ways oh yeah yeah like, like yeah, i mean Nui's just the devil yeah. and and <laughs> you know like like okay <laughs> think okay i'm going to use a harry potter like okay take take what's her face miss pink lady um, um yeah spawn of spawn, spawn of, of satan you know like yeah. like you hate her way more than you hate um, Voldemort, right? What right. What's her name? Uh, I I don't know why I'm blanking on this. Like I should know. She this. who must not be named. She who must not be named. But and, the thing is, is that yeah. like Rakio sucked, and I was so excited to watch her go down. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but Nui, Nui was something else entirely. Like Nui, I wanted to be absolutely just just eviscerated, blown to pieces. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> hate Ragio of Bloom and Kranz, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I would say the reason why Ragio is such a fantastic character was we got actual backstory on her. Yes. We had actual contradictions in her characterization mm -hmm. that were consistent with not only the themes of the show, but were uh, centered around the primary conflict of her character. She had an actual goal that she stuck to and didn't sure. give up for the entire series yeah. one of the things that is um horribly lazy in my opinion in terms of writing antagonists is to make their goal change for the sake of character development now here's oh, here's here's oh, something sure. here's something that's very easy to do is you say ah you thought this was their goal but their actual goal was this now you want to see where that's done perfectly is satsuki Look at Satsuki's goal. We basically called her goal like 10 episodes before it was revealed. Right. It was well, so freaking mm -hmm. obvious well, because right, of right. how much other stuff was set around. It. And then and, when they started making them basically heroes yeah. of their own story, we and, were like, well, right. she's going to take all this and utilize them as her personal army right. to supersede her mother. We don't know like what she's going mm -hmm. to do after that. Yeah, yeah. But and, and the thing but, is yeah. is that even if you don't realize that that's her goal, Satsuki's mm -hmm. goal, right? You know right. that she has a goal that is mysterious and there's something to it, right? Right. Not all the cards on the table. It's not a straight played game. Mm -hmm. Um and so so you know that there's something there. Like because the 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 uh the aha, uh -huh, you know, I reveal my plan after all this time can be done to great effect and it can be yes. it can be absolutely wonderful when it happens, but the thing is it is not the same because you still have like because I feel like with um with Rossiu that was in in Gurren Lagann that was one of the 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 big issues that I had with him is that I didn't care for him all that much in the earlier points because he didn't I didn't feel like he contributed all that much maybe I would think differently if I went back and rewatched it now but um and he's then, better on rewatch I right, will say that. okay yeah. yeah he's okay I, I I could definitely see that but but it was the the ending portion where we saw this different side of him and I'm I'm not talking about the whole trial thing and what he yeah. does there I'm talking about the negative effects that certain things have on him right <laughs> right that was where I loved Rossiu yes. right and and the thing is is that while while I have no doubt that he would get better on rewatch there would still be the aspect that I would have to put up with all these points where I'm like I don't really like him right now, mm -hmm. you know? And and the thing is, is that with someone like Satsuki, now comparing Satsuki to Rossi, was, <laughs> <laughs> say it isn't so, Joe, but yes. like, <laughs> but we don't have to put up with that, right? It's, it's very clear she's got a game going, mm -hmm. right? She's got a game going, and then there's all the, the, the payoffs that they can have happen, but the journey is so damn enjoyable. Yeah. Like, and, 
every time they showed her recruiting the devas and she's five years old or something right with her still with her sword yes. and her serious face and her eyebrows yeah the, like, the story basically took the theme uh, style approach with regards to you know logical character decisions and stuff mm -hmm. you know like a five-year-old that can command basically and have the foresight to take down her mother and all that stuff uh -huh. yeah 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 because I think in a lot of ways they would rather have their characters be enjoyable than like logical or even incompetent. One of the things that I think a lot of stories do for the sake of realism, for the sake of realism is make their characters incompetent at things and that's their flaw. But the thing is, oh. is that there's sometimes no actual in-character reason for their incompetence. Sure. They're just incompetent for the plot's sake. Well, there are a lot of moments in Kill a Kill where Ryuko is incompetent, not because of the plot's sake, but because the story has had no rules as to what she can or can't do right. throughout the beginning. So mm -hmm. she's basically bumping into all these other extremely competent people, uh -huh. and they're just like, no. Like, yeah. Gamagori basically just standing there, broad shoulders, just being like, you cannot pass. You and know? usually it doesn't matter because she's the protagonist in Kill Kills, you know. So, so eventually we know she'll right. surpass it anyway. Um, one of the other things, you, you were saying the whole thing of, like, the, the characters having a change in goals. Yeah. Um, as, a, as a means of characterization. One of the other things that, like, er, was that exactly what you said? I'm not sure. But one of the things that, that frustrates me a lot, frustrates me a lot, is when a villain will get basically convinced out of their their struggle. Especially because, if they spent decades, you know. Exactly. And especially if they were talking a bunch of shit about it leading up to it. Because if it's something where you can tell that this person is maybe just like a hurting person that's like like taking it out on those around them, then I get that. Because they've set up that there is internal struggle and conflict, right? right. But if you set them up to be the person where they, you know, I am Loki of Asgard and I am burdened with glorious purpose hate that line because it's him that's saying it um but the one with all the internal conflict exactly and and the thing is is that kill a kill doesn't do that we talk about how much we hate nui and rakyo but they are they, they are excellent antagonists because one there's no logic in kill a kill so why bother having like uh character like bad guys that basically have that depth to them instead they just have people that we think are the bad guys that have depth to them and then it turns out that they're not the bad guys mm -hmm. right um, but with the way Nui and Ragyo are just so overwhelmingly sickening, right? That does so much. The fact that they stick to their guns all the way through, the fact that Nui, even after she gets her arms cut off and all that stuff, and even though she knows that Ragyo doesn't care about her at all. And even more crazy comes out of her. Yeah, right even more point. crazier yeah. comes out of her and, you know, all of them and everything. It's, they, it's something where they stick to their guns. And that, that makes it so much more enjoyable when they get taken down and the thing is this is something that w doesn't work in a lot of stories it used to work in the old times but it doesn't work anymore most of the time with modern stories and i know there's a lot of like relative like uh, pointers in my grammar here but basically because stories got better so they were like we need to have more human people right mm -hmm. but this kill kill isn't about well okay it is about humans because there's main characters and stuff but humans are humans right but it's, but it's about incomprehensible people yeah so they can have characters like that and it absolutely fits it totally makes sense mm -hmm. it would feel weird if they weren't yes when when you look at kill a kill and you blend it together and saying like what the presentation serves and even the the characters and all that what does it serve I would say it serves for the purpose of the the entertainment, the medium of entertainment itself. But I would say whenever you look at, say, like the plot or the kind of the, the structural things, those are all in service of the themes. So even yes. when you have an overtly simplistic, I would say, character like Nui, mm -hmm. who in a lot of ways I could say, and I think Leary was saying this earlier, you can feel a little bit like the azula vibe from her oh uh -huh. but it's yeah. not given enough focus for it to be something that they were meaning to go like in deep like deep well, into okay but I, but i'm just saying that, that that's there if you wanted to look for it i, I it would does say, go in service of the themes though which is the whole family right you know, as basically a surrogate daughter exactly well know? and surrogate all the other stuff that went all along together that. other and, things and, yeah. and because they built they absolutely built up Nui to be just one bag of cats crazy yeah like and and you're just waiting for the point where this unravels and she gets to be taken down um 
and they and with the whole Azula treatment, they don't they never go into the thing where showing more her sympathetic side. It's in my mind, it's rather just the thing of she's absolutely crazy and yep. she needs to go down. And yeah, she's probably going to stay crazy to to the very end because it's too late for her. Yeah, you know, it would have been great if someone helped her out and you know gave her a good talking to if Satsuki tried to recruit her early on, you know, but. But that's that. That's that. Yeah. And I'd say Ragio is a character ending mm. on that, like, specific note. Like, Ragio mm. ending in such a way to where she had truly, like, they're memeing in chat right now, she had truly rejected and forsaken her humanity. Yeah, yeah. And we saw those decisions. We saw a lot of those moments where she gave up a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And it was at a point towards the end where I think you could even argue, you could argue that she had nothing left that was human. In fact, she had a couple moments in the story where she's like questioning, wow, is that my, is that my last bit of humanity? That little piece right there. Is that it? I guess it is. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's basically just like, I, I guess it is. And let's go. I, vroom, vroom. And, and I think what's what's you know cool you bring back all of the themes and I remember Jacob and I constantly bringing these up over and over again the idea of you know coming of age and and blood and family being something that's bound by blood or beyond blood the threads that tie us together the threads that tie this whole story together um, the awakening of who you are and your 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 sexual identity but also just like who you are as a person. And then just identity in general, just all, mm -hmm. all of that being this, uh, I would say, almost homogenized and still accented at specific points, just gift that Kill a Kill was to us to experience. I, right. I hope that other people can see that mm -hmm. within the overall experience and get a lot and get a lot of uh, like real world value. It yeah. as well because it's, it's a it's a it's a very smart show despite mm -hmm. being so incredibly stupid yes yes like the, we we had talked about at different points how we wished that we had been able to watch Gurren Lagan and get that experience when we were younger right yeah it's like hearing communist speeches as like a kid oh like, yeah oh, come oh on my God. come on right and I feel like it's the, the same sort of thing with kill a kill but maybe like a year or two after Gurren Lagan <laughs> in some oh. ways you do kind of need to watch Gurren Lagann before mm -hmm. Kill a Kill I don't think you really have to but but it, I think it's better if it, you do it shows the evolution I would say of the studio one figuring out kind of what story they wanted to tell mm -hmm. and yes yeah, defective yeah 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 exactly yeah. the fellow <laughs> yeah. fellow uh, uh, glass reflections yep. Uh, yep viewers <laughs> out there um yeah like it's i i almost wonder like okay no this would be terrible but like okay son it's time to have the talk but first <laughs> but first let's watch this let's show. watch kill and kill yeah. oh my <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> being like 14 and watching this show with like whichever parent or mm -hmm. whatever would be the worst like whichever yeah. one you don't want to. right right yeah yeah <laughs> the most like that would be oh boy uh like yep. like not even withstanding the transformation sequences you get into things like later with ragio and you're just like oh this is just uncomfortable no matter who i'm with like i'm alone and this is uncomfortable like eh, no <laughs> no 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 like the cat no 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 yeah. no Oh man. Yep. Yeah, I meet yeah, yeah, 1998. I just watched the first episode. It went from WTF at the beginning to this is amazing at the end. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I would say that Kill a Kill in the first episode to the last episode in a lot of ways does that as well. Is you'll be kind of just WTF throughout the show enjoying it and then at the very end you'll just go, "Wow, that like changed my life." Maybe. Mm -hmm. Like like I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people might not enjoy it as much as like we have, or even like they might dislike it. I do think that a lot of the people that dislike Kill a Kill haven't watched all of Kill a Kill. That's just yeah. that's just that's just yeah. one of my predictions. right because the thing is, is that if Kill a Kill is not the type of show for them, they're not going to finish it, right? 
And but, if they do finish it, how could they not like it by the end of it? But Unless one of the things, yeah. right? But one of the things that I think is is cool about Kill a Kill is there are certain other stories where they were guilty pleasure, and then you grow out of them. Or, or, you know, or what rather, I mean? or you or finish rather, the show, you loved it, and then looking back on it, you feel guilty that you loved it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think Kill a Kill is the kind of trash that actually matures the more it gets you look better back with on age. it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like a yeah. fine wine. Seriously. Oh, uh, yeah. Even when alone, you could fear God is judging you from above, Mesker. Oh, my God. <laughs> I personally didn't enjoy, and I watched it all, Perverted Old Man. It seems like it would be exactly the kind of show for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait. Larry says, take parent through all of Kill a Kill to open up about sexuality. Mom, I want to space scissor the t-shirt alien. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. Oh, that's, yep. that's, that's great. Well, and uh, the other comment oh, earlier man. up of like feeling, so feeling bad for Nui because, you know, seeing uh, Ryuko tear uh, Junkatsu off of her mm-hmm. and then realizing that, yeah, Nui didn't have a Mako. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. another great point, Larry. Yeah. yeah. It's oh. yep, and they and they don't actually draw attention to that. They don't like they don't focus on it or say like, uh, oh, do you notice about how? Oh, if only knew we had a Mako, you know. No, they don't do that. Yeah, but it's there. Yeah, yeah. When when we get, I, I would say when we get kind of into that space again where we want to shill, kill a kill, and we are not really ashamed of it. Like, we're, we're not kind of embarrassed about shilling Kill a Kill to, you know, like, lots of people and stuff. First date, so there's the show I want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, if they like anime, then, like, just... If they just, like anime, they've probably already seen it. I mean, I mean, they probably at least heard of it. Right. Jake, because I, I, was, I was at Frisbee recently, mm-hmm. and I was asking someone about anime, and mm-hmm. they're like, oh, my God. Like, I love anime. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, what have you been watching? Like, well, I watch, like, old stuff. Oh. And, like, oh. like, like, I thought like, you were going to say it's like, oh, yeah, Bleach and Naruto and well, One well, Piece. Okay, and... there was the one person that only, like, showed yes. yeah. This person then went into how they loved, basically, uh, like, grand epic narratives and stuff like that. Uh, so, Hajime no Ippo, I sure. told them that we were, you know, watching Legend that stuff. Heroes? And they were like, oh, Hajime no Ippo. No, I don't think they even knew what that was. Oh. But they mentioned uh, Naruto and yeah hajime no ippo they mentioned a couple other series and stuff like that and i was like what do you think about like 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 bite-sized short shows Mm -hmm. where they give like really compact and he's just like oh that's just not for me i'm like why and he's like well because i'll finish it and then i'll be like the void yeah he'll he'll basically be like well i don't want there to be this point where i want these character stories to continue but i know it's not going to Mm -hmm. and i'm like right well that's that's really interesting so like with yeah, with Kill a Kill, I feel like it's the one story where I don't really need the story to continue. It's going to feel like the void there, but upon kind of thinking back on it, I realized that yeah. like in a lot of ways, because it was so well done, mm-hmm. having no more of it is the perfect it's, way to end it's it. It's the yeah. same kind of thing like Avatar The Last Airbender yep, in a lot exactly. of ways. Yep. Like mm-hmm. when people were clamoring for a season four of Avatar The Last Airbender to be focused on the search, the, the search for Zuko's mom, oh, I yeah. remember uh-huh. even back then being like, you uh... know, like they could do that, but it ended so perfectly, like like so absolutely perfectly that it feels like it would be a bit of a, a disservice, not a fan service. It would actually be a form of fan disservice to go uh-huh. into that sorry what what happened dub danger zone by the way jacob i actually started watching domestic girlfriend thanks i hate it this is that is trash that will never mature and i'm okay with that <laughs> domestic girlfriend is like finely aged soda water <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. i just i just yeah. for the sake uh you know domestic girlfriend and the appreciation of it is not the opinion of our sponsors this is a specifically <laughs> jacob thing uh yeah he, i watched that on my own time specifically because i was like caleb put this on a poll he's like no no never no not <laughs> happening <laughs> oh my gosh <clears throat> uh Oh, it also help, helps to build a good recommendation <laughs> credit score first. Watch Konosuba. Watch Fumofu. Watch Silent Voice. Also watch Kill a Kill. That's what I get, I promise. <laughs> That's really yep, genius. So, yeah, I like that yep. order by which you went because the Silent Voice thing is basically just the the final win. 
because once right. you get them to watch silent voice they're well, like oh anything this guy says is good is a masterpiece and then you're like and let me just slide into your dms real quick with kill a kill the thing is if you already got them to watch konosuba i think they wouldn't have a problem with kill a kill surprisingly i think that's 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 not true actually. really yeah i think that the reason why konosuba works mm -hmm. in the fan service department it's way more etchy than kill a kill no i i agree but the characters aren't usually wearing those outfits like all the time. It's just really localized to Aqua, and what she's not wearing. And yeah. what she's not wearing. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. And and the the physics, the three physics engines, one for the everything else and left and right. Yeah. <sighs> oh my gosh, we did a domestic girlfriend talk. That was Jacob talking about it already well, previously. We didn't really, it was more like I would like mention it, you know, every once in a while. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's just I, I've been having so much fun with that, and and is it a guilty pleasure? No, because I don't believe in guilt. Oh wait, yeah. interesting thing you guys should look into about Kill a Kill is the almost perfect marrying of actual Japanese history. Are you talking about like okay. the way it was constantly at war with China? Are you talking about the division of the shogunate and, or shogunate and basically the 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 uh, provincial warfare in that regard? I'm curious to which part specifically, because I don't think it covers the entire Japanese history because, you know, like at some point there was a beginning to uh, its well, the, coverage of the, Japanese the, the, history. No, its coverage of Japanese history was absolute because the right, life course, fibers, you, you know, go. came in a long time ago. Uh, and yes, Rummies, I did see Gigg's tweet about binging all 200 chapters of Dark okay, Girlfriend. Okay, we're getting off topic here. Left to report off, off topic here. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> all right, y'all, let's get the, let's get the topic girlfriend. back to Kill, kill, kill a, a Kill, kill here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, kill a Kill, it's like... Okay, okay, here's... I have to mention a few specific things. Okay, good. All right, the Devas... There have been many stories that have tried to do the squad, and especially ah, like the sure. slow walk, you know. But every time we would get the Davas walking, with especially if they're like flanking Satsuki, I mean, hot damn, like like that. That's just one of the coolest things ever, ever. And the thing is, clip that. <laughs> yeah, just the hot damn coolest thing ever. Like take that. That's that's brilliant. <laughs> like the the like there are so many scenes in Kill a Kill where it goes into like just absolute rule of cool territory and and it would i would call it villainous virtues if not for the fact that they aren't villains at that point very mm -hmm. clearly right right but like the part where they do the toast to each other before like ragyo is going to show up at the school and they they break the glasses on the ground and and yeah you know you aren't even really sure what it's for but it, you know they just do it and and it absolutely fits and it's like tomorrow's the day and, and there you go and like the devas if i were to if i were to like my big story takeaway from kill a kill if i were to talk i mean there's there's a few uh -huh. music you know nonsensicalness but also just like the squad like i almost i mean battle lines is basically all quite literally already a story about the squad but like i kind of want to do another one just for like the deva style squad <laughs> because hey i mean like <laughs> It's so great. Yeah. Just absolute rule of yeah. cool. Absolute rule of cool. Ugh, yeah. <clears throat> it will be clipped. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Uh, Wakashirimi, thank you so much. Uh, specifically, the Meiji era. Okay. I will look that up. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I don't know specifically what the Meiji era is, but I am a, I'm a big fan of history. It was probably the only subject in school I was really good at. So I, I, will, I will go and check that out. Don't for sure. forget armor. Yes, that is also a big thing of battle lines, and it's also in Kill a Kill. <laughs> yes, the no wonder I like this show. Yes, the villainous squad of four is a common storytelling thing. Yes, mm -hmm. it's 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 yep. a very it's a very specific thing with regards to stories to have the uh, the I don't even know if I don't even know if it's in the numbers. I think that the number four might be a specific storytelling thing because the number four in a lot of cultures is, cons of the apocalypse is considered that, unlucky. Yeah. Yes, and has mm -hmm. a sort of portents with regards mm -hmm. to yes, the four horsemen of the apocalypse or something like that. And I don't know if it's cross cultural with regards to Eastern Western different cultures and then other areas as well. Well, four is unlucky in Japan, so well, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm 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 pretty sure that is the case. Um, 
but specifically in any kind of story where the squad is essentially it you know there mm-hmm. and present um that you know, that goes into like early early stuff like on both the protagonist and the antagonist side because it's not just like an anime you have power of friendship like mm-hmm. with you know with what mako represents in the whole right. story but you have characters who have to rely on each other but still usually in these stories they're led by someone and the right. devas we call them the devas and not the devas and satsuki because they themselves are their own or their group, own unit exactly and they yep. all yep. as a unit follow satsuki mm-hmm. and that's yep. a good thing to differentiate because satsuki is not one of the devas she is not one of the squad right and that is something mm-hmm. that i think is is important to to bring up because satsuki is so much bigger so much further beyond that in that these four the devas serve satsuki <clears throat> battle lines battle lines and yes there are armor <laughs> transformation sequences and battle lines yes um so battle lines yeah if you like the devas and satsuki battle lines um, oh my god yeah <laughs> Prediction. Or is bad mojo gotta use either three or five to guarantee your story will sell? Well, no, no, it's just that's just for the protagonist, primarily. Right, exactly. For like, if if you're talking about serialized television where you're in a cop drama or something like that, you've got your main characters. Yeah, it's three or five basically. And and I would say one of the best examples on the protagonist side of the the four that is just right there is when you get into basically the uh, the color coordinated squad. I, Avatar the, ninja, the Last Airbender? The Ninja Turtles. Oh, sure. Yeah. Actually, if you look at mm-hmm. Avatar Last Airbender... They started as three, and then they got the fourth. Yes, but you can actually say that they never really started as um, at, as four at any given point. Now, here's Okay, you... because Aang is always sort of, like, separate. No, no, no. Makes sense? So, when the mm-hmm. only time I think they were at four was for a brief moment when they weren't even a group yet... That was at the very beginning. So you have Aang, Katara, Sokka, then Appa. Okay. Oh no, Appa, the, no, the animals no, don't count. No, no, no. I, I, I think they, I think they do when they get named. Then you, then they brought in Momo. They don't have lines, like <laughs> they talk to Appa. Yeah, but Appa doesn't actually enunciate words. So you're saying that once Toph came into the group, then they were four. four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I guess then they also had Suki technically come into the group for a small period of time as well. So well, yeah. But by then Zuko was already in there, so that was all no, screwed no, up. Anyways. No, no, I'm talking about in book two, for that brief moment where she escorts them. Yeah, Serpents Pass. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's true. I know you're not the biggest Suki fan, but well, <laughs> it's understandable. I, I just find it hilarious that during the the uh, basically the the girl power episode right they have the main girl that is introduced be named suki who ends up being the one episode love interest for the dorky guy who also um was a jerk to her and her name is suki um (laughs) yeah i just find that a little bit funny (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. And then we have Suki all across the right, right. show, which is amazing, <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. So with, with Kill a Kill, I, I think that we, we've said most of everything we, we wanted to say. Are there any specific questions you guys have Dang for it. us? You're right. Um, uh, specifically uh, surrounding Kill a Kill. And Appa did have lines. That's right. Nightmares yeah. and daydreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. But, but also, like, Appa had, like, like an actual named voice actor he was not well yeah but he d, d bradley baker's everybody like i know he's everything but momo in that respect also had kind of semi-intelligent lines i know also d bradley baker so it's, it's good to, the good rhinos to were d bradley baker <laughs> <laughs> oh man have you noticed that killer kills imperialistic themes have you noticed that killer kills imperialistic themes and how and how they blended in the story school. It's hard uh, to the read. The uniform, the ultimate uniforms, how people live their in their stuff. It's super militaristic. Yes, plus a lot of political talk about Japan and how there's not as much freedom there as it seems. Well, sure. I mean, like the fact that the the children are all basically like securing their parents in their you know family's existence by you know their their performance in school and stuff. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was some and there was some uh some slight uh some slight even fascist tones that were put into the the story to specifically uh you know sell that point as well. I, I think that that's something that was to show the problems that existed in the world because of the dictatorship essentially that existed at the very least within the school via the rule of Satsuki and her family and also existed as a structure that needed to be t- torn down. I think you could also say that that's a structure that most kids see, you know, in their parents as they grow up and they start to realize, oh, their parents don't actually know what they're talking about. They see as, ah, this dictatorship must topple. I must rebel this against dictatorship. The... Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> that was the laziest of... <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, uh, so apparently communist voice actor voices Guts. Wait, what? Yeah. You mean... Daiki, yeah. Guts Guts in, the dog. Guts the dog? Guts the dog. Okay. That is amazing. Yeah. I wow. have no idea. <laughs> Where did you see Daiki? I can't even see... Oh, oh, no. there it is. There it is, yeah. yeah. Would you two have preferred or added anything to Senketsu's fate? No, That's Senketsu, tough. I think, is a, is a portion of the story that, um, to be honest, I, I, you know, looking back on the story, I think I could have analyzed Senketsu more. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think they also could have gone deeper into Senketsu with giving him, like, actual explanations to specific things, but they didn't, and that's okay. But I, I, I feel like... I feel like Senketsu is a part of the story that I'm going to look at a little bit more closely on a rewatch. Right, same here. Because the this is this is my big thing about Senketsu. I don't know if this is because he's clothing. Mm-hmm. Because they do a very good job of having him be expressive, and in the same way that a lot of the other kill, kill a kill characters are expressive, because they don't they don't really do subtle expression in Kill a Kill. Not not as much. Right. Sometimes, but not as much. Yeah. Um But with Senketsu I didn't. My attachment to him wasn't as fast as the other characters. Yes, absolutely. Like, like I got attached to Gamaguri way faster than Senketsu. Yeah. Right. Like because I still kind of saw Senketsu as just the clothing. The clothing. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, um, call me a jerk, but gosh, um, the everything that he they, wasn't armor yet in your mind. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that would have changed my mind completely if so, he was so, just, like, made of metal, you so know? Jacob, in Battle Lines, are we going to have talking armor? So I debated that, actually. That was something that I strongly debated. I was <laughs> like, do I want to have there be an onboard, like, computer system computer that, AI that is thing. in, like, the armor that helps them with their stuff? Oh, my gosh. Um, I... I really I really thought over that one and molded over a lot and spun it around in my head. Uh, no. Yes. Yes, I know he's clothing and human. I'm saying mm-hmm. that when we started off with yeah, him exactly. in the story, I a lot of his depth came later. Like, yeah, and a lot of his depth in the beginning was stuff that I think I tried to extrapolate out of little bits of data that weren't actual evidence pointing towards that specific conclusion. Mm-hmm. But I knew he had to have some depth. I was just trying to figure out what it was. And a lot of it ended up being thematically correct, but not plot correct, if that makes sense. Sure. My, my predictions regarding Senketsu. Right, yeah, because his, his role yeah. in the story thematically was was very similar to the whole, you know, father thing and all that, that connection. Mm-hmm. Hence him burning up at the end makes sense, right? Because, yeah, yeah. Um, even though he wasn't actually her father. Um, serious sure. question here. When asked, would you openly say that Kill the Kill is one of your favorite shows? Absolutely. Now, Now, are you saying would we recommend it first it. well well or or would we say first thing when someone says like what are some of your favorite shows would i immediately say kill a kill no not necessarily because the thing is it wouldn't do much good for the other person because yeah. they because the thing is i wouldn't want my saying kill a kill to cause them to to basically not value my opinions on other things because right. they might have heard of kill a kill and already had a a wrong but but you know basically a, a preconceived notion about it right yeah. so that then when i try and recommend to them a silent voice they'd be like Mm, yeah you know so yeah yeah we we don't t- do you a tell strategic here's here's a way of thinking about it when someone asks you what your favorite shows are or one of what are your favorite shows in general do you list all 50 of your favorite shows like 
Right, exactly. Like, yeah. is it our favorite show of all time? No, probably not. Like, not in terms of, like, if I had to put all of them out there on a line. No, it's still it's not. It's up there for me. It's it's really good. It's and I don't, I don't I don't really care too much about putting on numbers on spe- things right, like that. Right, because it's subjective. Like, you apples and oranges, how can you truly compare them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah seriously. Mm-hmm. Oh, Star Platinum 08 with the Twitch primary sub for the fifth month in a row. Here's the real question. Mariuko or Gamako? Ah! <laughs> Here's what I will say. I have seen the uh, the hamster banana. Oh my god! Meme. <laughs> and I love it. I could not stop laughing when I saw that. It was I really good. I could not good. stop laughing. It was really good. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it was it was painful and hilarious. I I didn't know what to do with myself. Just uh, see that. see here's the thing. I ship uh, all the characters. All the characters with each other. You know, why can't we all <laughs> each other? One big F pile. Not necessarily in that sense. Um, but but like I I ship Mako and Gamaguri. I also ship Gamaguri and Satsuki. I also ship Satsuki and Ryuko. I also ship Ryuko and Mako. I also ship like like Non Non and Satsuki. I also ship like Non Non and the uh, <laughs> You know, uh, there there are a lot of ships in this show that I yeah. have, and and like threads, they're all tangled up. Yeah, and I'm not really a shipper, just as far as things go. He's in denial. I might be in denial. Yeah. Yeah. Soon. I, the main Someday. thing is, I might think in the moment, yeah, I shipped that person, and mm-hmm. then like a like a dog seeing a squirrel, I'm just like squirrel, and then I just don't think about it anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it's not something that occupies my thoughts on a continual basis. Gotcha. <laughs> Become a Redditor, 318, posted by, uh, posted one month ago. Sailor uniforms are made to be grown out of. From now on, wear whatever you like. Clothes that are far cuter than me is definitely my favorite line in the entire show, probably. Oh yeah, mm. Senketsu, we'll miss you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Low-key best ship is the two nudist beach dudes, uh, Sumugu and Ikoro. I can see that. DTR. <laughs> no, DTR. <laughs> <laughs> and him jumping into the water and <laughs> taking balls. Like, wow. Yeah, wow. I'm so glad that I caught that. Because yep. when, when, when we were watching the show for the first time, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, that, that, uh, what? Yep. And then we went back and like checked it again. Before. Another quick question. Did you notice that Gamagori was holding a flower bouquet for Mako in episode 24? I believe I remember seeing yes, that. I think yes, so. yes, yes. Um, but yeah, that was at the end. Um, so amazing. That was at the very end when they were all going on the the the, the date right. thing, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I. Oh man, like I. Okay, I would have loved it if Kill a Kill had gotten the Gurren Lagann treatment, where they time skipped to a wedding. <laughs> and the because the ending that they did was fantastic. But in my, I had this head cannon that I still absolutely love of a time skip to a wedding and it's gamagori and mako <laughs> and so well, he just answered your question he ships gamagori and mako and satsuki walks gamagori down the aisle because mako is waiting <laughs> and then aikuro does the ceremony i love how you didn't answer the question there but then you just actually answered the question there so you don't <laughs> ship Mako Ryuka. I can have many head cannons. Okay, I guess this is just the one that you you thought of, though. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> perfect. They are all perfect. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> People are like yes, Jacob. Aw, and then die. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> Will you rewatch some episodes in the dub? It's really good. Absolutely, yes. Because apparently, okay. First off, yeah, yeah I mean, yes in general. Because Kill Kill is amazing. I need to rewatch it and stuff. But <laughs> apparently, the person who voices Mako in the dub is the same person who voices Minori Kushida in the Toradora dub, which is which brilliant. is like th- so brilliant. Of course, of yeah. course. So yeah, like this is. <laughs> Yeah, but that's actually the sub, believe it or not. I don't, yeah. but, but who cares? Yeah, yeah. Um, so so the, the fact that it's just, yes, yes. I'm so excited to see that. And then uh, Ira is freaking uh, 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 Uvogin. Dio. And Dio. Yeah, so it's like, dub. awesome. Yes, let's do this, please. Yeah. Um, uh, I What does Satsuki sound like in the dub? 
I Who's know. Satsuki in the dub again? I might not have heard Satsuki in the dub. Why should be Colin Clinkenbeard? <laughs> He's gonna be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would know by now if that because I've totally looked up what Colin Clinkenbeard's been. In. I know, but Jacob. Plus, Colin Clinkenbeard equals, uh, like, like, he's just like, <laughs> oh, my oh my god! She's an amazing voice actress. Yeah, <laughs> she is. She is pretty incredible. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I think we're actually pretty close to calling it, uh, calling it here. Check um, out the bloopers for the Kill a Kill dub. They are a lot of fun. Ooh, that Kill a Kill bloopers. Wonderful. Yeah, for sure. We will definitely check up on those. <laughs> that that sounds really fun. Yeah. One of the problems I have with the dub is that there's not enough. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. And that was that was okay. If I could change like one thing about the OVA, it wouldn't be this. But mm -hmm. one of the things that I wished was in the OVA was no, no, no at least just just once giving a <laughs> that would have been wonderful. It would have been absolutely wonderful. Uh. So I think as a proper way to end this, we need to remind you all to not lose your will. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, <laughs> don't lose your way in your mind. We have to be as a one. Don't be afraid, my sweetheart. This is the way to be more strong. Hop on my knee. <laughs> Sinclair, my body's dry. Uh, <laughs> oh, yep, yep. Forgetting lyrics in 3, 2, 1. Yep, basically. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, pretty much. But y'all, love y'all so mm. much. Thank you so much for hanging out on this podcast. Yep. Kill a Kill is just a wonderful show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, 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 my body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, one more thing for sure, Remy's. One genius thing I think the show did for Zenketsu is that he was made specifically less talkative in the first half before the second half. I think as their bond develops and development of Ryuho increases, he becomes more independent two and when in the end he reveals that he is be absorbing life fibers to become more sentient as to have his will of his own and how oh, he became sure. his own person we are not human we are not clothing either oh yeah oh, that's yeah. that's that's great yeah, glad you I could like make that. it for the very end blood hawk flock oh yes good to have you here yes <laughs> poor rob having to sync your singing up to the actual music. <laughs> 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 yes specifically in the 24th episode at the very yeah. end of the discussion when we did the don't mm -hmm. lose your way he synced up the music and slowly accelerated the music based on our offbeat singing of it because we accelerated into the song as we kept singing yeah wow yeah pretty pretty crazy huh? i can see that yeah it's pretty pretty awesome oh. so yeah y'all uh tomorrow berserk that's right pacific standard time that's right on thursday divinity original sin 2 co-op stream 5 p.m pacific mm -hmm. standard time and on friday witcher 3 5 yeah, p.m pacific standard guy. time yeah, mm -hmm. so check all that stuff out. Leave a follow if you're new and you're not doing that yet, so you stay up to date on all notifications and stuff like that. And before we cut off, there's two things. Oh, there's yeah. two things. Oh, so yeah. one, battle lines. It's amazing. It's got armor. It's got transformation sequences. It's got squads and all that jazz, boom, and it's awesome. Boom, it boom. is awesome. Um, But also, <laughs> you may have heard me talk about Critical Role at some points. Now, there was a Kickstarter for Critical Role for an animated series made off of it. Now, if you haven't heard of Critical Role, you might be here? like, what, what? But the thing is, it's absolutely awesome, and I'm so excited for it. And like, you should check out Critical Role, because this is the thing that's going to be coming, it's going to be cool. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what but the yeah. hell is Battle Lines? <laughs> Good one. Uh, yeah. So, y'all, we'll mm -hmm. uh, see, you all. see you all tomorrow, yeah. hopefully. Mm -hmm. But until then, Resemblance of Sanity... I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next, next time. time. <laughs> so, as long as they don't lose <sighs> their way, Jacob, what can they expect to see with the They can expect scissoring in, uh, drills. In and... battle lines. Oh, in battle lines. Yes, okay, yes, so as long as they don't lose... Well, okay, armor for sure, because armor, armor is just mm -hmm. the sexiest thing Definitely. ever. And it's true armor. Um, there is a beach scene oh in and it's very plot relevant Yanny. it's very important that it happens yes um and it's wonderful and it's fantastic um there is also